in our morning rounds. Outrage over the latest move toward designer babies. For the first time, Chinese scientists use new technology to alter DNA in human embryos. The experiment could eventually help change genetic code for generations. Eric Schott is the director of the ICANN Institute for Genomics and Multiscale Biology at Mount Sinai Hospital, Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. Good morning. Good Eric, morning. this is so fascinating. First, explain what the Chinese did. Yeah, very fascinating. So what the Chinese did is they took human embryos that harbored a mutation that caused a certain blood disorder, and they literally went in and, and very precisely cut out the bad piece and replaced it with a good piece to eliminate uh, that particular disorder. This is a single gene mutation. So what other single, single gene, gene mutations that are common could this be used on? Huntington's disease. Yeah, there's literally hundreds of different diseases to which this could be applied. You know, think of things like Huntington's and cystic fibrosis and Tay-Sachs and uh, sickle cell anemia. All of those. BRCA1, uh, the breast cancer uh, gene. Even the BRCA yeah. genes as well, for sure. And, and, and what diseases are not at this time you're able to if you believe there's a hereditary disposition so the complex diseases, diseases like schizophrenia and obesity that involve hundreds or thousands of genes where you'd have to go in and edit that genome in, in, a, in a more massive way is not yet possible. But the, the idea that you could cure a disease in the embryo before a baby's born seems very exciting and groundbreaking, but a lot, some scientists are fiercely opposed to it. What are they worried about? Yeah, the number one concern uh, with this type of technology is you're, you're changing what we call the germline. And those changes you make to the germline get passed on for all time. As long as that lineage exists, those changes are going to be propagated through to their children, the children's children, and so on. And we don't really understand yet enough of the genome you know, to, to be making certain types of changes. You know, this technology also is not so specific. It, other mutations are introduced uh, at this stage when you make those changes. So one ahead. of the things, you know, when I did this piece for 60 Minutes, we mm -hmm. talked about they had embryos and they could tell which ones had those single gene mutations. They just discarded those. In this case, you're actually editing right. out that, right. that, that, that bad gene. And, and all, putting back in a good one. And putting back in and putting and putting back in a good one. What's fascinating is that there are a lot of countries around the world that prohibit this. The U.S. is not a signatory to that. Well, they're not a signatory uh, sort of formally that way, but there are many trade and scientific organizations that have come out against it. Uh, and you know, you still have to get through FDA regulation to make this uh, happen in the clinic, and that will be a problem. Take this to a logical extension. What is it that could possibly be done that would cause rational people? to be scared. I think, you know, beyond helping disease, curing uh, disease, preventing disease, is starting to change all sorts of, you know, physical characteristics, enhancing your memory, enhancing your intelligence. The fact that the, the only the wealthy initially may have access to this mm -hmm. and create a big gap, a bigger gap, between the haves and have-nots. So are there color, ethical hair issues? Color, hair eye color, color, eye color, absolutely. Are there yes. ethical issues? Well, I think uh, that's one of the yeah. ethical the, issues. The only the rich can have access to yeah. that's an ethical issue. Yeah. And then the other is this, again, the, the fact that it's happening in the germline and you are sort of permanently But suppose everybody could have access to this. Yeah. Is that still a bad idea? I think uh, something we need to think about is uh, both, uh, both society in general and, and the scientific community because we're making fundamental changes to the gene pool and we don't necessarily understand how we adapt to different environmental changes. And changes we may make today may not be advantageous 100 years from and, now. And think what it might do to aging. And think what it might do for aging. As we start uncovering you know, low site for longevity, right. we could easily enhance that. Thank you. I like, I like that idea. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Eric Shaw. We all do. <laughs> yeah, we, we really do. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Especially on the knees.